grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, our gospel text today is really a very nice gospel. We have uh, a depiction on the front of our bulletins. It's such a pretty bulletin, don't you think? And a pretty, one of the prettiest of the year so far. And he will give you another helper, the Spirit. A lovely, lovely little gospel reading this morning. Very happy sensation and feeling about this gospel reading. He will give you another helper. The Holy Spirit. Such a nice promise. Such a wonderful thing to say. The Spirit, he says, will be with you forever. And Jesus says, I won't leave you like orphans. Oh, that is so wonderful. He's preparing to leave, and he says, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to give you the Spirit, and he'll be with you forever. You're special. Because others cannot see him, nor do they know him like you do. Because he's with you. And he is in you. This is all such a happy message of promise. I hope. Why do you look so pensive like I'm going to change topics? <laughs> I mean, other than that Jesus is going away, we have a very positive message of ongoing presence and guidance. The presence of the Holy Spirit at work through His Word in us, promising salvation, reminding us of all that Christ has said to us. In another place, Jesus says of the Holy Spirit, whom He will send, He will be just like Himself. Someone just like Him He is sending. Both to us and to those disciples who were with Jesus as he walked along in his earthly ministry, this is certainly very comforting. Which is good because the Holy Spirit is also called the Comforter. But before we say the Amen and sing the Hallelujahs, we might pause and look at some other things that Jesus said in this Gospel reading. He begins with some words that are easy to pass over and look at the good stuff. But we might want to also look at the opening words to the Gospel. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's not the if we loved him part that's our problem. Of course we love him. It's this you will keep my commandments issue that's the worrisome part. Right? I woke up today and looked in the mirror and said, well, it's a good thing it's church today because I really need it. <laughs> yes, your pastor's a sinner. And I need his word. And I need his sacraments. And I need him forgiving me daily, richly. And so do you. This is one of those if-then statements. In other words, it's a conditional statement. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. What does that say about my love for him? I say I love him, but I daily sin and do exactly the opposite of what he has commanded me to do. And so do you! I know you pretty well. <laughs> and you don't have to know you that well to see that. Nor do you have to know me that well. Just get in the car with me after church and you'll see. Real quick, as soon as I get out of the parking lot. And naturally this throws a barrel full of ice water all over our little happy party of promises today in this text. These conditional statements can make us feel bad or worse, even begin to worry about our salvation. <clears throat> Truth be known, right off, there is reason for worry. 
we don't keep the commands of God. Paul reminds us in Romans and elsewhere that there is none righteous. No, not even one. He says in Romans chapter 1, there's none who understands, none who seeks God. All together they become worthless. They're faithless, heartless, ruthless. God, haters of God. They disobey their parents. Right off we can see that we're all in a world of trouble. We are by nature not command keepers, but rather lawbreakers. It's in our stuff. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus reminds us that if you look lustfully at someone, you've already committed adultery. And he says it's the same with anger. Murder begins in the heart and it starts with anger. He says if you're angry with your brother, you're already guilty. The scripture reminds us if you're guilty of one point of the law, you're guilty of all of the law. Then there's Jesus reminding us of the greatest commandment. Love. Love God with all your heart. With all your strength. With all your mind. With all your soul. Love Him with everything that you have. This creates quite a conundrum. How is He ever going to be able to accept me, a known commandment breaker? first thing we should do is to realize that just exactly who this Jesus is that has made these terrific promises. He's God. He is God in the flesh. Born a man who lived a perfect life for us. That means in our behalf. Then he died, a sacrificial and atoning death, again, for us, in our behalf. On the third day he rose again from the dead, victorious over death and hell, and again, for us, in our behalf. And he ascended to the right hand of God the Father, for us, in our behalf. And for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, who is called the Helper, the Paraclete. Not parakeet. <laughs> paraclete. It means the one who comes alongside. It is written, He will guide us into all truth. This was the way that God dealt with the question about what to do with a bunch of commandment breakers like us, whom he loves. He did it through his son on our behalf. He ascended to the right hand and he ever lives to make intercessions for us. He has sent Jesus to be our surrogate, our proxy. A kind of replacement in judgment for sin. He took our place in punishment for our misdeeds. He was our substitute. And he has given us also a new nature. A new nature in the waters of baptism, which the scripture calls the washing of regeneration, of rebirth. Reminding us, as we heard in our first reading, you must be born again. What this means is that we have a new birth. One that has been born to a new nature within us. It is a nature that loves God and desires to keep the commands of God. A nature that is by virtue of its rebirth, a saint, not a sinner. There is in those who have been born again a new man that God is growing. And in that 
water, those waters of baptism, the old man was drowned and put to death. And daily we are in, recalled to, to remind ourselves that through those waters of baptism, He has made us new creatures. The old has passed away, Scripture says. The new has come. We are new creations in Christ Jesus. So Luther reminds us in a small catechism that when we make the sign of the cross, we're to remember that moment when that sign was first placed on us. When the pastor put his, the cross on our forehead and put it on our hearts to remind us that we are ones who have been redeemed by Christ the crucified. Somebody asks you, when were you saved? The answer is, on a hill just outside the city gates of Jerusalem, when God hung between heaven and earth and died for me. That's when you received this forgiveness of sins, and it became yours when He claimed you in baptism. You are at one and the same time a saint and a sinner. I didn't make that up. I wish I had thought of that myself. <laughs> but I read it because the great reformers of the faith, Luther and those who followed him, said it this way. You are simultaneously justified even in the act of sinning. There is a new man in you, a new creature that is being made into the very image of Christ. And he is killing that old nature in you daily through word and sacrament. You are becoming the image of his son, Jesus Christ. It was this that Jesus was referring to when he told Nicodemus, you must be born again. It is the new nature that we are nourishing this morning in the preaching and learning of his word, in the receiving of his sacrament, as we remember when He called us through this sacrament here and called us to be His children and put His mark upon us. It is that new nature that Jesus comes to create in us and at the same time to kill that old nature. <clears throat> that is why this indeed is truly a lovely gospel. I wasn't really kidding when I said that. It is full of promise and hope because Jesus, in our behalf, made full payment for your command breaking in order to make you lovers of God and keepers of His commandments. That is what we are in Jesus' name because of His hard work in your behalf. Praise be to Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Mm -hmm.